We're on day three of this shower build that I'm doing here. This is an old school shower build, so we're gonna be floating the walls. We did a pan liner. Yeah, that's right, a pan liner. You probably haven't seen me do a pan liner in about five or six years. This is what the contractor wanted. So I was like, hey man, we can do it. Day one, we got the pan liner in. If you wanna see that video, I'll put a link in the description. Day two, we came in, we floated the mortar bed on here so that the mortar bed is all ready. This is a water in, water out system. We're not gonna put any topical waterproofing over the float. Everything is designed to go down and drain through the weep holes of the drain if water gets down below the tile. Uh, we're gonna be floating the walls. I cut in my niche first and I wanted to get a good layout so that we had a full tile here at the bottom and we had full tile on the left and the right. So what I did is I set up a story pole so that I could find out exactly where my tile layout was gonna be. I'll show you what we did. Here is our, our story pole for our vertical. And all we did is got the tile laid out. So we're gonna be doing a vertical stack pattern. So I call it the Kit Kat pattern where it's just vertically stacked. And so I, I just take a stick, lay it down, and then take a Sharpie and make marks wherever those grout joints are. So I have a, an accurate tile layout here. And I also did, did the same thing to get my side to side layout because again, I'm trying to avoid sliver cuts and I wanna get full tiles on the wall. So the way I figured out the height on my niche is I got the floor tile, because the floor tile is gonna go down and then I want my walls stacking on it. So I got my floor tile. I got a horseshoe spacer. Here's a 16th. I want a little grout joint there. And then took my vertical story pole, set it right there. And it's real easy to see the full tiles. So you see my niche is exactly gonna have a full tile at the bottom. See, I'll have a good size cut here. The size of the preformed niche, I couldn't go all the way up. That'd be a pretty tall niche anyways. So I'm gonna have a nice cut there, full tile. That'll really be a nice feature coming through here. And then on the side to side, I made sure that once I centered my wall layout, because I want my this wall to be centered, I found my center line and then did the same thing with a story pole. And I marked all of my grout joints here to make sure that I'm gonna end up with a full tile here, full tile here. So I'm gonna have full tiles on the sides and I'm gonna have a full tile here at the bottom. So yeah, once I, once I figured that out, I just used my multi-tool to cut out the dent shield to the opening that I need. This is a tile ready niche. I really like these. And because I'm doing a one coat float, I was able to uh, put sealant on the dent shield and then put the niche into it and then screw it off and seal it off to the dent shield. So this is all sealed underneath and then our wall float is gonna come right up to that. So uh, you'll see more on that as we get going. Uh, I also wanna get with my story pole here, I wanna get a full tile up at the height. So I want full tile on the bottom, I want full tile up at the top and I just made sure here that I'm gonna be up nice height above my shower head because we're not going to the ceiling. This is a 10 foot ceiling. No need to go all the way up. This would look like a little cave, but that's my full tile right there. We'll take our wire up to there to get this shower prepped out for floating. So when I do my wire, I like to, to do the a perimeter square edge like I did across the top, did across the bottom. And then I'll kind of just stretch my netting a little bit going, going this way. You don't want to stretch it too tight. You want it to be furred off of the wall a little bit. But yeah, then I'll just kind of, more staples. This is a duo fast stapler. This is model CS5000, really good staple guns. These are 3 8 galvanized staples, so they won't rust. And these staple guns are awesome. Don't buy a cheapie. Check out the Duo Fast, not sponsored by them, never have been, just always have used these. Really good staple guns for putting up lath and, and stucco netting. This is 20 gauge stucco netting. Uh, they use this here in California on 
one coat stucco exterior installation. So one coat stucco, they are allowed to do by code up to a four story exterior building with one coat stucco using the 20 gauge stucco netting. If you could do it on an exterior facade that's four stories high, getting sun, rain, wind exposure, it could definitely hold up here in a three by five shower. So that's why we use it. A lot of people use lath, but the stucco netting is really nice because it's soft, it's easy, it's pliable, it's easy to sink staples in. So again, this is the Northern California one coat float method. I believe in the TCNA guidelines, it's method B441 if you'd like to look up the specs on it. And I'm gonna be very careful not to put any staples uh, below the, the top of the curb here. So my, my lath is just kind of hanging over right there. Okay, so today is day four. This probably should be like day two or three, but again, I'm taking my time on this, and if, if you're a beginner or haven't done this before, you're probably gonna go about the same pace that I am. But yeah, today is day four. We're getting ready to do our one coat float. I got a bunch of videos on this, so I don't want to go too much into detail on the teaching aspect. I have hour long videos. I'll put the link in the description below, but we got everything prepped. We got our stopper sticks up. This is nice and plumb. I'm going to screed off of this. So I like to get this stopper stick plumb. What this stick does is a half inch stick. Uh, I use ring shank nails, just ring shank drywall nails and I put them in, I try not to go into a stud, I just try to get them into drywall. So the ring shanks will grab a hold of the drywall and keep them firm, but you can pull them out. If you get into a stud, it's really hard to pry them out and they'll break your stick. I use some horseshoe shims, 16s, just to plumb it up. So sometimes, you know, you might need to go eighth, whatever, to get this stick nice and plumb. Some people don't even plumb them. Some people just run them with the wall but that makes it a little harder for the glass door companies. I like to have a nice plump wall, so that's why I shim it like this. If you do need horseshoe shims, tilecoach.com, got a great deal on them. So we got this set up, wire lath that we put up, stapled up real nice yesterday, nice and tight. I got the curb lath on here, you see the curb. If you ever see anybody putting fasteners on the top or the inside of the curb, they're doing it wrong. No matter what, stop them in their tracks where they're at. You can only have fasteners on the outside of the curb. That's why I like to use this galvanized diamond lath because you can shape it and fold it to what you need and then it'll kind of just suck on real nice and taut so that it doesn't move around and you can just fasten the outside. So we'll be floating this after we float the walls. That's already another detail that I did. It's spelled out in TCNA method B441. That is the method for the one coat float is that you need to separate your wall mud from your floor mud and I did that with this expansion foam, this quarter inch foam. I took it all the way to the pan liner and I taped that on there. And so that way my wall mud is gonna have a quarter inch gap from my floor mud. What that does is it separates and won't allow that capillary action to happen for the water to wick up the mortar. And especially at the curb, this is where we see a ton of failures is when the water wicks up and over and actually star tile is the first one to turn me on to this and at first i didn't believe him i think i told him he was full of crap but after tearing out uh, numerous showers with that problem because after he told me that i started to look for it and yeah so when you see a shower that's 10 15 20 years old and everything is rotting out on the sides the baseboards uh, sometimes the curbs swell up and crack because the two by fours get wet and they expand. That's because the, the moisture is wicking up and over and getting down to the two by fours on the other side. So this is basically a capillary stop right here. I'm going to fill it in with sealant once we're done. But that, that detail is actually spelled out in B441. And I'll try to highlight that for you so you can see where it's at. A lot of Northern California one coat floaters are not aware of this. Uh, detail so anyways take it for what it is that's what we're doing so we got the mud mixed up we're ready to go i'm pumped i love float days it's a good day to get a good workout and just show off my skills so here we go
Okay, make sure. Uh, actually, no, I'm not going to dump it on the floor this time. I'm just going to it. I get up higher I switch from two trials to one trial and a hawk that seems to work for me a lot of guys always work with just a hawk and one trial I found when you're down lower it's a uh, more ergonomic and faster uh, to use two trials but yeah anyways once I get up high I like to get mud on my hawk and then work it once I get up because it's just more distance to get up and down I normally like to tape off the, the top edge there. Probably should have, but I'm gonna just be careful and hopefully not make a mess. fast, right? <laughs> Oh, okay. Over here. This one's on me since it's my shower. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Thank you. Wait a minute. <laughs> I guess we're showering again. <laughs> like, wait a minute. I want to come to the stage for the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. These are really good golfers. Okay, so. you owe me 125 bucks. We'll split this. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks, man. man. You got it. Yeah. So. <laughs> Can I see the uh, oh, rubber mallet? Okay, you can film this if you want that. Okay, what I'm doing here is getting these uh, float sticks plumb. I try to get my mud 
I might be a little shallow on my mud, but I want to get my mud about a half inch thick, and I can I can just gauge it by what I got up here. I'm actually like five eighths, so I can go in some more. I want to tamp these in, so I try to get my first coat of mud as thick as I need it, so I don't need to add, and I can just screed off. But check my levels both ways because sometimes even these stabilas will uh, give you a faulty reading. So I turn it around, just double check. Yeah, and I really like that. I like that a lot. Do the same thing to the other side. Try to get the mud off the level. And as I place these sticks, I gotta make sure I got my straight edge I gotta make sure I don't short myself. You see, I, I wouldn't want to put the stick too far to the wall where if I went all the way this way, it'd slip off of the stick. So you gotta make sure you put the sticks in the right place according to your straight edge. So I'll get this. Pretty good about that. Yeah, what this wall is doing is it's actually tilted like this. You know, they framed it and the wall's going like that, so I have to bring out the bottom a little bit. That's what I'm looking at. Yeah, I'm good there. I'm gonna try to tamp this in just a little more. Just Yeah, I didn't want to go too thin because I got a half inch here for my, my tile ready niche has a half inch, about a half inch profile. So if I got my if I got my float strip sunken in too deep, when I went to screed it, I would have hit the niche, but I'm just about just about perfect. Just about perfect. You see I didn't put quite enough walnut on. I'm gonna go ahead and do a screed. And then uh, Zach, can you give me an empty bucket? You gotta We'll probably have to put that back in the bucket. We jumped the gun a little bit there. That's all right. I can chop it on the table. Yeah. You just want to be gentle with your scripts. You know, I'm not putting hardly any pressure on them. I don't want those strips to move. And they'll kind of, they'll stay put, you know. As long as you don't go crazy with them. So it looks like I got enough mud up high. There was a belly in this wall and I didn't fill it in quite enough in the middle. That's fine. I'll just come in and float it again. Uh, these are inch and a half uh, by quarter inch redwoods lattice strips. What we do is we take a two by four, a nice redwood, you know, find the cleanest one you can get, no knots if possible. You know, I know there's other parts of the country where you can't even get redwood, but um, here we can, we have a lot of redwood in our home depots and stuff. So we'll buy a two by four and then rip them into quarter inch strips on the table saw, and get them real nice and smooth. But that's what we're using here. You can use, you can use other materials. Duck fir and pine seem to warp a little bit. I say Doug Fur is probably better. I know um, Mark Christensen with Tarkus Tile, who's gonna be teaching a two-day class with me here coming up. Uh, if you wanna 
join that class. I'll put a link down in the description below or any other tile classes. You can check out the link that I put down below. But he uses masonite. He uses eighth inch masonite, rips them down. So he gets you know nice, thin, uh, consistent strips. This is just old school, the way we've always done it, the way I was taught to use the redwood, so it works good. that so yeah so I got to fill in my low spot here I'll go ahead and do that and uh, finish her off these are Marshalltown trowels I've always used Marshalltown this guy here is probably 25 years old made in the USA great trowels not sponsored by them, just love their trials. Maybe they will sponsor B Marshalltown. Find me. <laughs> we'll talk. That'd be so cool, you know, to get sponsored by a company that, you know, back when I first started Tile, Marshalltown was just like such a cool brand and everybody wanted a Marshalltown trial. I remember my first margin trial that I got and, um, you know, how cool would that be to end up being sponsored by like a company that you looked up to so much and uh, when you first started. So maybe that'll happen someday. Nice thing about sheet trials too is it's really easy to switch from left to right. I was going right and I just switched to left. It just seemed to have better finesse with it. Get the right amount of mud on. I definitely think it's easier. If you're learning, try it with two trials before you jump on the hawk. I know this tile burn is that something.
powder in there? Uh, I don't think so. I think it's pretty good. Uh, yeah, let's chop that guy up. Just a little, little spritz of water. That's good. We started at 9.45. What time is it, Zach? 10.53. Uh, 10.53, so about an hour and 10 minutes, we got these three walls fluid, so it's not as much work as you think. Plus, I had a lot of fun, man. This is cool, got a good workout, and got to hang out with the guys on the job site. So cool. Um, I had the homeowner come in and he said, I, I don't know how you guys do that. He said, it's such a mess. And I said, because he was, he was uh, my old football coach, one of my old football coaches, and he worked at the high school. I said, yeah, it beats sitting at a desk at a high school all day. <laughs> and the only reason I can say that is because my dad was a teacher. And I was half kidding. Um, half not kidding because I was actually going to be a school teacher. I completed, um, you know, I was only one year away from getting my bachelor's and I was going to be a school teacher, but I just couldn't do it, man, and fell in love with tile work, so here we are, and I love my job. It's awesome, so you might have one of those desk jobs and uh, might be time for a career change. Maybe not, I don't know, but if you hate your life, you know, so much of our life is work, right? So much of it is, and if you don't like your job, you don't like your life, so... You make a lot of money in the trades. Tile work is awesome. You get to create a perfect substrate for tile, right? And out of piles of sand and cement, it's so cool. So anyways, we're gonna let this set up a little bit. It's pretty cold and humid and it takes a while for this mud to set up. So we're gonna go clean up in here, take a lunch, come back, we'll float the curb. And probably the last thing I'll do is pull the float sticks out Yeah, hour and ten minutes, pretty good.